I'll have a beer, please. <laughs> <laughs> later, later. later. Uh, okay. Uh, the purpose is to line out in detail the powers of concept. We do have one reference that was uh, brought in by Chief Doyle on our uh, cheat sheet here that we uh, gave you. And uh, he, he uh, wanted to add uh, to G, or change to G, I don't know, to... Uh, That's land development. No, it's, no, it's Article 2, Section 205. By, mm -hmm. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, 2.05. I think he felt as though it was redundant, and I think we'll need to just, we'll take what he has, and we'll look at this, and we'll make sure, we'll review that that again, to star that one is one yeah. that we need to really. Which subsection are you talking about? Uh, right here. G. G. And it was in his handout that he gave us. Right, it was in that. It's at the top of your next page over here on that sheet. sheet. Yeah, this is fun. And that was what he. I don't see any difference. I don't either. Hill. I'm just looking at it. And, um, so we need to just kind of. I do have another question on that section. Redundant. I think he was saying this was somewhere. I do else. have a question on that okay. section. Okay. Yes. On, on which section? G. G. Well, of course, it's a landmine, quite frankly. Okay. Uh, this is why I brought this different thing here. It's awkward. But if you notice, it says this charter protects the golf course. Yeah. Where is the golf course? If you look at the section of oh, this land is owned by the city. Mm -hmm. It's not specifically set out by description where the golf course is. What you've got here. Are you a golfer? What? Are you a golfer? You're not going to golf where Malloy's is. That's a that's an improved area. You're not going to golf your uh, hit your ball into the swimming pool. We hope, but neither of these are set out here. And the problem we've got it's down the road because right now there is a provision to change the zoning to make this all city center. So the golf course, this language saying protects the golf course, protects whatever the actual golf course is which may be perhaps uh, out of this acreage, I don't know how many acres they have here. It's set out here somewhere. But see out of 17 acres, whatever it is there, maybe the golf course is 10 acres. The other seven acres is not protected. Right. Do you understand what I'm saying? You understand, Dave. Mm -hmm. And the intent when they passed it was just, they didn't describe it, but just that area where there was a golf course. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have at risk here, potentially, for development, behind Malloy's, or including Malloy's, and behind the uh, pool, uh, under the uh, city center designation, section A thereof permits multiple family dwellings. So right now, except for where the actual physical golf course is, they could put in, theoretically, Metropolitan housing, Section 8 housing, or anything you want behind Malloy's. Now you see, Malloy's well, never going to happen. I don't think it can be happening. Well, I think that's, golf, that's course, what bothers golf course takes it to the back edges of these people's property on Ingram. Yeah, it there. but it, it goes my pro the problem is not here. Okay. That's where the golf course, no one questions this area. The problem is where it stops here, right around here. The whole parking lot. Yeah, the whole parking lot area, and that Malloy's. area up to here, and Malloy's and the pool. That's not part of the golf course. So, that are, would you so that's not protected? It's not and protected. Yeah. So you would maybe propose that instead of golf course, it needs to be a specific I would set out the uh, of that area. For this whole Edward. area. And uh, there is a uh, uh, section... Uh, we can do it by parcel number, and I had to check. It's 17.821 acres. Now, the reason I have this, I went down to the uh, auditor's office and pulled the tax map out because I had some problems with the zoning, and that's one that's set out. And the golf course is an asset we need 
It's green space. And it's a, it's a danger. Under Would the you refer to that space as the recreational? That's the point. We ought to change it. Recreation area? Recreation. We have it available for golf course, uh, because uh, the nature preserve or parks or whatever. Be more because, specific yeah. with that area. Yeah. Because when it said non use shall not con constitute a change. So if the golf course ended, that area would have stayed as an open space. Yeah, so the point you is, don't have to keep playing golf there, but it does have to stay in the natural space. But the space problem with that, it's not specifically described right. as you can see. Yeah. Well, Dave, you understand what I'm talking it's about. Green, right. but well, you protected maybe this area up here, all around here, that's golf course. And but you can get a surveyor out there and you can survey where the end of that golf course is. And all you do is split out this area and it's not protected. Um, the, uh, the front lot there where you just had your pencil, <clears throat> I don't know what the new zoning is calling for that, but that's B3 zone now. Right. So that strip of land, uh, because the Masonic Lodge was owned that land, they bought it and we went to court and then ended up, the village ended up owning it then. Right. But uh, it was set up so uh, a Masonic Lodge could be building their offices, that sort of thing. Is that the purview of the Zoning Commission, though? No, and and we should be silent in the charter? The well, it shouldn't be silent because we got to protect this area called the golf course. I'm agreeing with you. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm saying, too. does it need to be in the charter or should it be in zoning? It should be in the charter because it's a heck of a lot harder to change the charter mm -hmm. than it is the zoning. All, the, all they the have to do is have already already the there. majority vote of the electorate. No, yeah. Yeah, that's enough, but you have to get the signatures to do that, and you have to run well, it through. No, it's, 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 the it's the definition. No, the council. It's the definition of golf course. But you're de yeah. what, what we define as the golf course. Yeah, right. and, yeah. and the actual description where it is yeah. uh, is a question. Yeah. Because right now the way it reads, it protects where the golf course physically is. But not. But the physical area of the golf course does not cover seventeen point eight two one acres. Right. It covers maybe about 10 of that. Mm -hmm. And they could easily say, let's have a three-hole golf course and parcel it down even further. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah and I don't want, and you know, I'm greedy. I want the whole thing protected. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, Malloy's I have no problem with. The swimming pool I have no problem with. I like to keep them there too. I don't want this back here at risk. Right, that whole parking lot back there. Putting some okay. Yeah. That's why I brought this map because it's a landmine there. That and all it's a problem. Are you also talking about over off the side when baseball diamond is in that? No, that's up here. That's, that's up here where the Wynton Woods is. That's, that would be that's, that's this, yeah. this is that's owned by Wynton Woods Board okay. of Education. Right. Okay. They can sell that tomorrow, and uh, and actually they, this back here is roughly about an acre back here. This open space they use, mm. or the a city uses for I think <coughs> soccer. Yeah. Theoretically, Winter Woods could survey that off, split it off, and sell it. And under the new city center zoning, they could put apartment buildings back there too. I don't like that idea, but I'm dealing with take first things first. What I can do with the charter, or we can do with the charter, is protect the golf course in this area here. We can't do anything about Winter Woods. We don't own it. Right. And, and we, and by charter, we can't control what a, a separate governmental entity, which is a school district, can do. But we certainly can control what we pay, we own, and be what the charter at least partly protects now. Can I ask a question? It might not be appropriate, but wouldn't the zoning protect what could happen with that area if the school district sold that particular? Well, I what he's saying that. is the zoning, if, if and when that new zoning gets into effect, that they're proposing changing that zoning to apply. They, 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 they. I know. Okay. I, I addressed council just briefly for three minutes. They let me. I put in there. A under under the new uh, definition of city center, subsection A was multiple family dwellings. When you put that in, you can't control who builds those dwellings and what that they put what in there. called the city center? Is that how they're defining it? Yeah. How we should? I, 
what you've got to really do is look at that zoning, proposed zoning ordinance. The people in the village are pretty much asleep on it. And uh, it's, uh, it's a real, some real zingers are in there. I have a problem because I am involved in both of those things. I'm very much against some of the stuff they're trying to do. And I'm mixed up with what I can say and what I can't say. Yeah. And I'm not too sure how much we can do and how much we can't do. Uh, well, in this case, I mean, well, this golf course is right in here. Okay, so we can okay. certainly okay. talk about it. We, we can. <laughs> We, as a charter, can change and control that. this area here. I've seen this a lot. Well, I see yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should be aware. Yeah. Every, we're we're going everywhere yeah. in the world on this, and I, I'm not convinced, I, I but I'm, not, I'm uncomfortable with it. Well, I understand. You can always abstain when it comes to the vote. No, that's not what I mean. I think if we're going to, I think we're going too far out of our spot. We're going in for a cross down in here where the school zones are. I'm not worried about that. But we're bringing well, it up and we're you know, talking well, about we're, it. And we're going to star that and come back to it. Tonight we're not going to make any decision about yeah, it. Yeah, I just wanted to bring it up yeah. so people were aware of the situation. Yeah. Yeah. And Think nothing happens in a vacuum. If you have to use the term golf course, well, or how, we have to define. What would you? What terms? Maybe it's, it's a matter of changing the language. Recreation that area. That entire area. Yeah. Yeah. Or, Put actual dimensions or, in it. or lot numbers. You'd have to oh, survey yeah. it, and that gets expensive. Yeah. You're probably talking about five or, or six thousand. Or that's that's and we need to be yeah. careful too. That if we change some wording here, we're going to completely change the situation over in the other activity. If we take golf course out of there and no shall not constitute a change, then all of a sudden what they're working on in this building becomes untrue and, and unfair. And that's uh, no. We got our job with the charter, and yes, what we do with this charter to some extent is going to control okay. what they do with the zoning. No question about it. But that's the whole idea to having this in the charter, so they just can't for the heck to of it change the zoning. And well, of course, if they don't like it, they don't. That's have right. It. They don't right. have to okay right. too. So that's another way. It is mixed, whether we like it or yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. There's, 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 there's checks and balances here. If if the concern is green space, would we want to make it a broader definition? I would suggest the so. existing parks and recreation, including the golf course. Or I, I would suggest that a broader sure. definition. I agree. We need a broader definition. If there's there's other golf parks. Golf course and property city, surrounding. Or or I would say, maybe put in a specific like walking trails or nature, nature. Uh, We're going reserve. way way beyond yeah. where I want to be right now. But that that's in detail. We don't want to do that tonight. Yeah. I just want to bring up the problem we've got here. Because we'll. We'll talk much more in depth about that. We'll come back. But right now, I don't want to do that. So 205. Okay. Uh, I have a comment on the Greenbelt section okay. Green for us to be think, to think about. And I don't know how we would change that. We're still in G, yes? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had some issues with the Greenbelt zoning. And actually, the Greenbelt zoning that we have is not a real strong stand for the village to protect the Greenbelt. So we had issues with an, an individual who bought some Greenbelt property, and uh, we were able to uh, keep anybody from selling land to him to be able to get to it. But that doesn't mean that he couldn't come back before. But he bought some land in the sheriff's sale uh, that is in the Greenbelt zone. and then he wanted to put in one of the things that the green, green Belt Zone allows. So in Green Belt, permitted uses are public park reservations, playgrounds, public recreational buildings, allotment gardens, farms, nurseries, and gardens, public utilities, bus stations, signs erected wow. by a public authority. Okay, well this guy wanted to put in a, a campground, which is a park-like area. And, uh, he said no, and he said, well, it's in your zoning that I can do it, which, which is true. But he didn't have an access, access is the problem, isn't it? Um, to get into it. But he did approach some people on Brompton and on My Street, on Bayham, trying to buy some land from them so he could get access to that property. And it runs behind uh, Burley Circle, or it's on that big mass, it's not on there. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's, it's on the west side of town. Yeah. 
So I would like to see us figure, try to figure out a way to have to not go to the citizens to vote to change the green belt zoning, but something that would say uh, there shall be no no changes to the green belt zoning other than to strengthen the green belt zoning. Something or be no development, no no improvements or development on the green belt area. Well, but we still, if a person started. wanted to put a a park back there or campground. Well, we put it in the charter that you can have no development or uh, improvement on Greenbelt area, then that kind of restricts yeah. his ability there. So at least I'm a, this is what we can do as a charter commission. Yeah. Now, what zoning can do is something else again. Yeah. I have to think with the charter hat what we can do, and I agree. If, if we had that problem, we ought to strengthen the charter in regard to Greenbelt. What yeah. you can and can't do on that green belt. Right. Because one of the things it's that we considered thing. in making a change to the charter and taking it to the residents to vote on was to change the greens, green belt zoning. Uh, because we can't change this zoning on the green belt now unless it's voted on by the citizens. Mm -hmm. That's whether to strengthen it or if you wanted to eliminate it, you couldn't do it. So, uh, you know, we were in a catch 22. We couldn't. With, and he keeps you know, coming up with this, doesn't he? he keeps well, he has. He hasn't been he, uh, around. You know, I've heard it several times. I mean, now, around wouldn't that the be last a business? Years. And the, wouldn't he have to be zoned well, to have a business in, there? Like a, no, no, it doesn't really spell it out. It's, according oh. to our attorneys, it's weak mm -hmm. in, in order to protect it. So right now the issue is there's no access right. at the moment. The, right. the defense mechanism. <laughs> no. <laughs> no access. Okay. I would think if, if he bought somebody's property, like that, that place goes up for sale. Yeah. He bought right. it. He's Old got days access. Days. Got access. Oh. How many acres do you have back there? I forget. It's ten or twelve acres, something like that. I think that. a lot of green belts going yeah. down. Yeah, too. I thought that you couldn't buy green belt. No, anybody can buy green. You can buy it. You always could buy it. You just can't develop it. Yeah. Oh, I hear. And this is contained. You know, it's yeah. surrounded. And there have been some cases that have gone up to the Supreme Court of Ohio on it, not recently. Right. right. Historically, to protect that green belt. The village spent a lot of money in court cases back in the 70s to protect it. Protect it. Uh, Fianco owned uh, all the, uh, the land on both sides of the road as you go out of town. Mm -hmm. And they were going to, they were originally going to put homes in there. But then the thing that ended up going to court uh, was over, uh, they wanted to go in and have it logged and good trees all cut out and removed. And, uh, and we ended up with a suit on that and went all the way to the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court upheld the Green Belt provisions. It was worth the money, yeah. by the way. <laughs> and the Supreme Court, I read that decision years ago. It did it because of the historical significance of the village of Green Hills as being a Green Belt community. And it went back for its precedent on the fact that it was a original federal grant that carried on through that made it a little bit different than any other community in the state of Ohio. But for that, I think the city may have lost. So you keep whacking away at it, there won't be green belt anymore. That's why I it. Let's yeah. come back okay. come back to yeah. two point oh five and are there are there other areas of two point oh five that uh, we need to kind of List out as far as being concerned. Are we done with G? Yeah, I do have, yeah, I have yeah. okay. Question on M I have, you might want to check with Jeff. To what extent, how do we enforce any subpoena we issue? Because normally only a court in Ohio, normally only courts and notary publics have the power to issue subpoenas. And have Jeff check that out to see. You know we have it in our charter. Can we enforce that? There's no use having something in there that's not going to do us any good. If in fact we can enforce it, great. Let's keep it in there. But uh, generally speaking, only courts and the by law, uh, no republics can issue subpoenas. Okay. And even if you issue it, how do you enforce it? And where do you get enforced? Generally speaking, only a court can enforce a subpoena. And that gets tacky. Could 
Could it be that council shall have the power to request the subpoena to be issued? Well, that's what I wanted Jeff to look at. Okay. I didn't make the big bucks and do the research. Okay. Anything else? All right, um, we're gonna move on to 2.06. Uh, 2.06, ordinances and resolutions of council. Actions of council shall be by ordinance, resolution, or motion. Motions shall be used to conduct the business of council in procedural manners, matters for elections conducted among council members and as otherwise provided in this charter. All other actions shall be taken by ordinance or resolution. No action of council shall be invalidated merely because the form thereof fails to comply with the provisions of this section. Any member of council or the mayor may propose any ordinance or resolution at a regular or special meeting, which shall be in written form and which shall contain a concise title. The form and style of ordinances and resolutions shall be determined by council. Each ordinance or resolution shall be read on two separate meetings, meeting days, unless this requirement is dispensed with by a vote of at least three-fourths of the members of council. The first reading may be by title only. The second reading shall be in full unless this requirement is dispensed with by a majority vote of council. The vote on the question of passage of each resolution, ordinance, or motion shall be taken by yea or nay, and the vote entered into the minutes. No measure shall be passed without a concurrence of a majority of the members of council. Emergency ordinances or resolutions shall require a two-thirds vote of council for enactment. If any emergency ordinance or resolution shall fail to receive the required two-thirds affirmative vote, but receives the necessary majority for passage as non-emergency legislation. It shall become effective as non-emergency legislation. The council before enacting shall determine that the ordinance or resolution is necessary for the immediate preservation of the public peace, health, safety, or welfare of the citizens of Green Hills, Ohio. And the ordinance or resolution shall contain a statement of the necessity of declaring the emergency. Each ordinance or resolution shall be authenticated by the clerk. The failure to sign shall not invalidate an otherwise properly enacted resolution or ordinance. The clerk shall cause each ordinance and resolution adopted to be published in at least one of the following manners to be determined by council. By posting a copy of the ordinance resolution in at least four public places in the municipality as determined by council for a period of 15 days or by publishing the title of the ordinance resolution in a newspaper, circular, or other publication determined by council to be of circulation within the municipality, or by publishing a concise summary of the provisions of the ordinance resolution in a newspaper or other publication determined by council to be of circulation within the municipality. Failure to post or publish or to maintain such postings shall not invalidate or delay the effective date of an ordinance or resolution, and in such events, the clerk may post, publish at a later date or delay effective date. By a majority vote of its members, council shall cause the codification of the laws and ordinances of the municipality. This codification will be updated at least every 10 years to, be, to include all new legislation. Copies of this code shall be placed in the public library, the mayor's office, and the municipal offices for public use. Notwithstanding the other sections of this charter, council may adopt by resolution or ordinance all or part of any technical codes promulgated by state or federal agencies, boards, or any other public or private agency. These codes may be adopted by reference, but shall include the title and source of the code adopted by reference. Each resolution or ordinance providing for the appropriation of money or for improvements petitioned for by the owners of a majority of the adjacent property to be benefited and specially assessed, or an emergency measure for the preservation of the public peace, health, welfare, or safety shall take effect unless a later date be specified therein upon its approval. No other resolution or ordinance shall become effective 
until 30 days after its approval. Okay. This is one that several people uh, who spoke to us, namely uh, Forbes and Kovac and Spaeth, all, all three mentioned 2.06. All right. I think one who is really here is we have three fourths of the uh, council and we have two separate meeting readings, but only two thirds necessary for uh, emergency. I think the in, Jeff indicated this is inconsistent. That's probably one of the only mm -hmm. cities he's aware of that has that provision. I agree with him. Yeah, I think you probably should have a three fourths on each. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then one of the other things that we've discussed was uh, posting on the website. Yeah. Yeah, I had a way further down. The clerk shall cause each ordinance job to be at least one or more of the following matters. And then we have A, B, C, and I put in there just to note the internet. Yeah. And then we have the same thing repeated on the next paragraph down, dealing with the majority of those members' qualification. There's no reason why the code, clarification of the code, should not be on the internet also. Because remember, this was in 88, we didn't have to worry about the internet at that point. Well, can, should we make it a little stronger than that? that? So the clerk doesn't have the option. If she puts a D, if we put a D here and make it D, she might not like that, and she might use A in its place. Shall I think shall. it needs to well, be, and everything they do has to be online. That's my I'm opinion. not going to argue with that at all. Not this but actually, case. now they are. That's true. Yeah. So we, who knows what who's here in ten years and get, gets lazy yeah. about their job? And I, I just yeah. you can't. It's going back. Yeah. But that's not. I would agree with that. that. Yeah. And the ordinance, the codifications on uh, online too. Yes. Uh, and one reason that when this charter was done, we put in here ten years. Uh, when I in '66 they recodified all the ordinances and came up with the new zoning and everything. When I arrived. Uh, if I remember correctly, they hadn't recodified things. So we had a bunch of ordinances that we passed. If you go to the ordinance book, they weren't in there because we'd gone five or six years without mm -hmm. codifying the ordinances. And so one of the things when I first came that I convinced council to do was to do an annual recode, uh, annual yeah. updating of the codes, uh, especially when it related to some of the things that the police would enforce an ordinance that was no longer in effect <laughs> because they were looking at an outdated book. Mm -hmm. um, you want to make the annual in? Well, I don't know if it's that's absolutely necessary, doing, but, but that's what we're doing. Yeah. You want and to I just on it or put it in there? I think it's something that's probably. I, I think it's something to consider. Mm -hmm. So that would be where this yeah. codification will be updated at least every 10 years to include you, but every year. Maybe so annually. Annually. Yeah. annually. Yeah. Updated at least annually. Yeah. Can we go back to the top of the page? I was thinking there was uh, a desire to have ordinances defined oh. as something long standing. Yeah. Ordinances yeah. and resolutions. Resolutions yeah. would be a much more limited time frame. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the language would be. I guess that's the law director. Yeah. Yeah, I highlighted that yeah. whole section because there was a whole bunch of stuff yeah. about resolutions. Mm -hmm. For the life of me, I don't know what three fourths of six is. <laughs> Think about it. Is that five votes? It's five votes. It's five votes. It, it always rounds upwards. Yeah. You're five votes. Where, 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 where is that defined? I, I, I'm thinking if it's always five votes, why don't we just call it five? Five out of six, five votes instead of three fourths. At least five votes. Um, I, either way, I, but I, it has to be. I think both these clauses should be consistent, and I really think three fourths is a better number than two thirds. Well, I, actually, I, I was thinking for waiving the ordinary reading or, or the first reading that could be a lesser standard. If four of six agreed, you know, be done with it. Emergency implies 
Yeah. Uh, something more severe, make that five out of six. And, uh, yeah, because, and actually if you said five, if you got one, if you have somebody absent yeah. at the meeting, We've had more, yeah. We've had more abuse of the emergency ordinance of clause than we have of waiving the reading. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and waiving the reading sometimes too is uh, when we have something that's ten pages long. But, yeah. yeah, that ends up. The Laws and Rules Committee light just recently did a study of all legislation enacted within last year came to the conclusion after studying each one that one third of them really weren't really necessary as emergency orders. Well, and I think that could be addressed by changing the definition of what can be done by resolution mm -hmm. and what can be done by ordinances right. too to some extent. Yeah. Uh, if we see an ordinance up here and a resolution here, I mean, or just start out with defining the two. Yeah. yeah. What is right. different? I know at least two members of the council are very uncomfortable with the excessive use of the emergency ordinance. Uh, so there's times when you need it. Sure. Right. There are times when you've got it's a mostly, deadline coming up, yeah. mostly by contracts. the state or something yeah. that you have no control over. Yeah, you got to use it. Yeah. But uh, too often it's been used because people are just too lazy to go through with, right? Well, it is not only lazy. It's also that things sneak up on on people. Oh. Uh, you're, you know, you overlook the fact that there's going to be a deadline for a bid or something, and so all of a sudden you're faced with you got to, you got to be there, you got to be ready, or you didn't know that well, there was the, a deadline. The thing for getting things placed on the ballot, yeah, the way they changed the state law on that, mm -hmm. they extended the period out so that you almost have to pass your issue as an emergency. You get it down to the county to review it, then you have X number of days. That would be a legitimate use of the clause. Right. Well, there are legitimate uses yeah. of the clause. Yeah. You know, uh, there are, I mean, it isn't like it's. But that's uh, something that might be able to be passed as a resolution. Part of our purpose is so, you know, the newcomer, the only been here seven years guy that doesn't have all this history, can understand what's going on. Yeah. 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 You know, I mean, if, if we drop the fractions, whatever the numbers are, and they become numbers. Yeah, another yeah, reason for a emergency ordinance is sometimes they're used so people cannot put anything up for a referendum. Because once you pass an emergency ordinance, you don't have 30 days to put a referendum up and get a petition signed to set it aside. The only way you could change it then is by initiative. It takes the same number of voters to do it, but it's more of a hassle. So a lot of times that trick is used as a parliamentary tactic to avoid the possibility of people putting things up for a referendum, but perhaps something may have should have, or may have, might have been put up for a referendum. I don't think we've ever passed anything you know, where we discussed doing it to avoid a referendum. No, not, not the whole time I was there. No. Uh, so I think we need to get Jeff to define resolution ordinance yeah. for what we could do and then revisit this Two, three, two thirds, three quarters thing. Mm -hmm. The other thing that was brought up was about having two readings, three, we now have two readings, yeah, consider yeah. three readings. Yeah, Mrs. Kovacs brought, Ms. Yeah. Kovacs brought yeah. that up, that three readings would be better because that way it gives you time to amend if you want to in between. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, the only problem is though, if the way council is organized today with only one meeting a month, potentially it could be three months before Something you would get something packed. Yeah, except you could use a work session as a regular session if you announce it. Yeah. So yeah, you have two, you really, your work session can be used as a regular session. If you announce it at your regular session, it's your, the next one's going to be, we'll make, take votes on it. So that can be done. I mean, it's not an impossible thing. No, it takes some planning. Yeah, and even Jeff wanted, suggested maybe three readings well, in case you want to amend it. Well, he, su he suggested because he didn't necessarily say go to three readings. He said a number of places have three readings. Well, part of that's a carryover from the statutory because under statutory, it's three readings. And when, when I arrived here, we were under statutory and we did three readings. Mm -hmm. um, but we did have problems because council eventually elected, since it was hard to get meetings together, people 
to serve on council always having, we had so many meetings. And when they went to one meeting a month, uh, then back when the charter was done, that's when they came up with the idea of only let's just do two readings and then we'll cover it in two months. Well, maybe we should look at whether we should just have one meeting a month anymore because that was in 88. Oh, and the pace was slower then. Well, no, but even before 88, we were doing two meetings a month. Yeah. And I, I, and I just, then we, I and then it got so that. Or if you call the work sessions and those other things regular council yeah. meetings. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That could just do. call that. The, yeah. Well, and you have, believe it or not, you do have trouble getting people to run for council because you have a standing meeting and then you have a work session. This is a committee this meeting. Little, and then you have probably two committee meetings if you are back up on one and you're the leading chair. So you're talking about four meetings a month plus other things that you're doing. And so you have, you have some problems there with people not wanting to make a career of it or not being able to make a career of it. They have a demanding job and travel quite a bit. So it's, um, you know, you, you want to make sure that you can get good people to serve by not making it, you know, so heavy, heavy loaded. I understand, but we don't necessarily want to crip the village's True. position either. I mean, it's, it's, you know, there's arguments on both sides. Right. And I think we have to really should look at it. Yeah, because okay. I think, you know, okay. this, this is 2000. Well, not okay. 1988, and things are moving faster, including the internet. Mm -hmm. And we have too many emergency orders coming up, and because stuff coming down the pipe, from either the auditors or the state or whatever, and we just don't have time to react on one meeting. Okay. Now, another one is uh, the way right right before you go into the it's about the clerk's posting. It says at least one of the following manners to be determined by council. Well, then you got three listed here. We've already mentioned a fourth would be the website. And um, Yvonne said to us that we also need to post in the public library be caught, to be compliant with the Ohio State requirements. So that is not an option. It, it has to be published uh, in the library. I, I double check that with Jeff. Okay. Because it didn't used to be that way. Well, and, and see, I'm looking at this as says one of the following manners. Well, A means four public places. So we could, that's what we've been doing, you know. But then yeah. you keep adding right. to it, you know. So um, we, I think we need to say it needs one to be posted. Or more. I'd say yeah. I put up there just in my own notes, say, at least yeah. one or more. Mm -hmm. That way you're not restricted to one. You can. Use all of them, or two of them, or three of them. Well, but I agree with the internet should be on there. Yeah. I, I, library, think, I mean, what? Yeah. Well, I think we need to du double check with Jeff. So I think the interpretation of that is not ordinances, but our code has to be. We, we when we recodify ordinances and when we get our codes, a copy goes to the library. So a copy of our ordinance book. It's at the library. Yeah, at the Green Hills Library. At the Green Hills, but it, if it wasn't Green Hills Library, it'd be at the downtown library. Okay. A copy is also at the law library in okay. Martin County. Okay. Now that may be something the state law requires mm -hmm. because we always with, with the that. new guys picking up the charter and looking at it, know all that. No, no. Mm -hmm. it no. no. And I'm, I'm thinking we go to A, B, C, D, E, and say three out of five. E being I would the public make library, D being the website. Well, yeah. I would make the website mandatory because we get all these public record requests now. And really for a lot of them, just stick a laptop, or not a laptop, but a uh, desktop computer out in the hallway and have it keyed in. This is where you're, you want this ordinance, you want this charter vision, it's right on a computer right there. Yeah, because if the library closes someday, then you know, if the state law requires your ordinance, not necessarily a brand new ordinance, but your codified ordinances, to be in a library, uh, then that can still be at the downtown library. Mm -hmm. But to do a, a monthly posting, if we don't have a library, uh, you know, I, it would be inconvenient to drive downtown and post it. Right. First off, they'd have to get permission to post it down there. I would think also, though, that you 
these resolutions are passed, they're a matter of public record, you know, even the ones that are not part of your codified ordinances, uh, they're a matter of public record. At the very least, they should be available in the clerk's office in a book. Well, they are. Yeah, they are. and uh, very easily accessible, and probably online also. Yeah. In this day and age, there's no reason not to have, if you pass something, uh, you know, for ordinance for assessment or, or whatever. There's no reason not to have it online. Have we covered everything on 2006? Yeah. <laughs> 2.06, yeah, uh, for now. Okay, Dave, can you take 207? Okay. Officers of Council, the first meeting in January of each year, the Council shall immediately proceed to elect a President Pro Tem and a Vice President Pro Tem from its own members who shall serve until the first meeting in the following January after the next election of council members. When the mayor is absent from the municipality or is unable for any cause as determined by the majority vote of council to perform the duties, the president pro tem shall be acting mayor and shall have all the powers and perform the same duties as the mayor. When both the mayor and the president pro tem are absent from the municipality or unable for any cause as determined by the majority vote of council, Perform the set their, to perform their duties. The vice president pro tem shall be the acting mayor and shall have all the powers and perform the same duties as the mayor. And I think that's. Um, we had a discussion about, um, and I can't remember exactly who brought it up, that there was a, a situation where the mayor wasn't there and then they didn't really know who was gonna step in and this or that. Doesn't this make it pretty clear? Who right. it, who is our our pro tem? Well that person was selected the, the, right now. January okay. first meeting in January. And then who would be the vice president? And that person is selected by council in the first meeting in January. Okay, so right now who is it? Is there any until Vice isn't Mayor there somebody is that's in that place until no, someone well, else is elected? Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, in, I so who would, well, well, every I year it can change year. The problem okay. is, but what I'm saying is like, it, it, the person that was elected to that position last year wouldn't they hold that position until a new person? Until January. Until every January they do this. First so meeting. who is right now? I think Bud Walderman is the. I think Bud Walderman is the third line. Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah. it really, as far as a discussion of it, the mayor and then who would be in charge after the mayor, it council much... council always knows. We all know. Oh, okay. It's, on it's pretty yeah. clear there who yeah. that person. We vote. We vote it actually, on. wasn't the mayor. It was. Uh, the manager. It was. Um, it was the municipal manager. She was out of town. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh that, was the, that was yeah. the. Yeah. 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 And that's a different clause now. Yeah, that's a different clause. Yeah. 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 Get to it. Yeah, this is okay though, I think. Yeah. Any any other concerns about this one? No. Okay. You're right. That's completely right. That yeah. Yeah. Uh, and go ahead and read yeah. it without me and make it. Yeah, it's tidy. Do you want to do 208? Oh, yeah. Organization and rules of council. The council shall be a continuing body, but, but shall at its first meeting in January of each year adopt a map. Magistry vote by majority vote. Oh, majority vote. I'm sorry. Uh, rules of organization which shall not conflict with this charter, and which shall remain in effect until amended, changed, or repealed by the majority vote of council. These rules shall go into immediate effect on any point not covered by the rules of council. Robert's rules of order, as revised, shall apply. Okay. What's Robert's Rules of Order? That's a general parliamentary book, you know. That's where you get into all the It's kind of the Bible for everybody. Okay. The first part makes the motion, the second is by yeah. the end. Oh, all right. Yeah. So this came up as a point of potential conflict right at the first meeting of this year when um, I respectfully suggested to the council they make three changes to their rules of council and I suggested well if this is the first meeting in January you can do that under your charter and the mayor jumped up uh, totally uh, chagrined that this could happen and said no it can't happen and I 
suggested it couldn't. He says, well, I don't know. At that time, the law director wasn't present or whatever. I suggest you check with the law director. That didn't happen. But you might need some clarification. Because so right now, um, if, they, if no rules of order are voted on January 1st, then Robert's rules of order apply. And there are very few rules of counsel. If you look at the rules of counsel, they're very few. And we've had problems, not this year, but the year before, with keeping order because there's been uh, at least one individual that's caused serious problems and disruption of counsel. Um, and um, there's a couple pages, Thad, of the rules of counsel. And um, I think uh, it has to do with um, the, the leadership and uh, that uh, when, when the president pro tem managed meetings that same year, there was no problem. Because he announced ahead of time he was going to do what he was going to well, do. Well, and, and he, I mean, that's the way all, all the meetings should be conducted. So I think, um, I think probably, I wasn't here, but the rules of council usually are proposed, any changes are, pro, are proposed by members of council. And um, I, mean, I don't know if that was the problem or not. Don't know. It was just. It's usually. It's usually, it's usually within the body yeah. that we we come in knowing that that's the time to make any changes and propose them and vote on them. And um, it may have, if it came from the floor, it might have been totally. I suggested unusual. it, but I couldn't do it. Yeah. I suggested that some of the council do that, and the issue came up whether they can do it at the first meeting or not. They can. They can. Sure. Uh, Fred Merle did not want it to happen, so it didn't. But uh, I, maybe, I have a feeling that it would have uh, if it came from within the body. I, you know, that's that's traditionally is always we're always reminded at the December meeting. Uh, be sure to review the rules of council. If there's any changes that you want to be made, bring them up at the first meeting. I, you're always told that. So with the change of officers and so on coming in, it may not have happened. But that was. I would say that's probably what happened. Can we go on? Yeah. Anything else? Is that one okay then? Yeah. Okay. Two point oh nine. Yeah. Amending legislation. No ordinance or resolution or section or subsection thereof shall be revised or amended unless the ordinance or resolution superseding it contains a restatement of the entire resolution or ordinance, or a restatement of the section or subsection thereof to be revised or amended. Upon being revised or amended, the portions of the original legislation which are in conflict with the revised or amended legislation shall be superseded and repealed. Purpose? I think they want to make it clear that everyone knows what they're amending. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Have a chance to compare them. Right. It gives a process for amending the legislation for the, you know, the It's a bit awkward to though, to say it. if you have an extremely long paragraph and you're only changing one sentence at the very end, reading the whole darn thing, particularly like, for example, you have this sub paragraphs here, mm -hmm. A, B, C, D, D. I think maybe you want to look at that to see if we can make it a little bit easier, particularly if you have multiple sections, you're only changing one section. You may be asked, Jeff. He has any thoughts on that? I think when you're dealing with the public or with um, mainly you're dealing with the public and so on, um, not everybody is as quick as uh, you are or some of the people that are working on it. And so to lay it out so that everybody has a chance to see both, compare them, even if it's the last line, at least they see that nothing else is being changed. I mean, it's, it's um, talk about transparency of doing business as a government. It probably behooves people to do it this way, even though it may seem more ponderous, it still is laying it out there. This is all we're doing. This is, you can compare them word for word for word for word. It's transparency. Maybe we ought to put something in there, maybe, that prior to each meeting of council, any proposed legislation, copies of it be placed for public inspection on the table. Because if you look at what comes in here, they have a, an agenda. The, the resolution itself quite often is not in there. 
Uh, sometimes it is, sometimes it is not. Different times, I was looked at somebody and what's this about? And I've gone over to uh, the clerk of councils, do you have a copy of this? You know, I'd like to read it. There should be copies on the table here, not 300 copies, but say 10 or 15 copies of each ordinance you're gonna have passed. So people can come up here, look at it and say, then you don't have to read the whole thing, you, you got it available. If there's anyone there that has a question, there it is, right in front of them. Well, a little bit, be, a little bit, because unless it's something very controversial, some of those are multiple pages, and just the cost of doing that uh, and having them all pitched outside and afterwards is. Um, and and they tend to do that, mm -hmm. uh, having them available if it's going to be an emergency yeah. kind of ordinance or, or controversial. But if it's going to be two readings, then you know they can do the first reading and the person. Got a month as it is right now. Don't to, uh, no one said democracy was cheap. Yeah, yeah, still. So. Well, it's still, I mean, we, we got such a tight budget. I mean, you know, that yeah. they just look at Is this a function of the uh, clerk, or is this something the law director would do? It would be the clerk. Okay. The clerk. Any proposed ordinance, I mean, maybe the law director would prepare it, but once it goes from his desk, then it has to go to the clerk and members of council to look at because they're going to be voting on it. Well, from that point on, it's technically a public record once it's proposed to council. And again, there are, not every time, but there are times that I've looked at the agenda and said, what in the heck is this? I've gone up, just walked up to Kathy and said, hey, what is this? Do you have an extra copy of the ordinance here? And sometimes, like one case, they had to go out and make it because there was something in there that just didn't click with me, and I read it, and yeah, the, what I, my worst suspicions were confirmed. Uh, now, does that happen every time? No, no, no. But when it does, it's significant. Well, I, the, the reason I was asking is that I'm getting documents, contracts in front of me. There's usually a black lining with different software. You can see the original, and you see the change right there, and it's, it's yeah, very obvious, very simple. I'm thinking the clerk probably doesn't have that technology. No. Probably not. I remember we were dealing with a, we we're dealing with a, something of a ice age or maybe beyond that, maybe horse and buggy. Is she putting them online now? Yes, she's putting them online. Yeah, online. That may, that, I don't know, but is she not put them on before? Yes. yes, 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 she is. Yes. She is. Yeah. yeah, I get a council. I don't mean to interrupt. I get a council packet every time, and it has everything and all the ordinances in there. I just don't know that we want to. That that's something that we want to yeah. make yeah. harder. Yeah, yeah. That might fall under rules of council. Yeah, yeah. but maybe not for starters. Yeah. All right, let's move on. Thad, you want to go with three point oh one? No, but I will. <laughs> that's that's a lesson. Yeah, I mean, my mother used to. Would you like to go to the basement and get a can of cherries? No, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> Article 3, Mayor, Section 3.01, Term of Mayor. The mayor shall be elected by the popular vote of the electors of the municipality on a partisan ballot for a four-year term to begin the first day of January following the election. Purpose, term of the mayor. It lays that out. Pretty clear and simple. Call not good. Um, I think we should. I think it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My check pocket. Okay. Section 3.02 Legislative Powers. The mayor shall be the non voting president of council and may vote in the event of a tie vote only. The mayor may propose ordinances and resolutions and may take part in the discussion on all matters coming before council. <coughs> Okay. 3.03. The mayor shall have all the judicial powers granted generally by the laws of Ohio to the mayors of all of Ohio municipalities. The mayor shall exercise all or any such powers in accordance with the procedure established by the law governing mayor's court. Is that possibly something that should just be dropped in our case? Since we don't have a mayor's court? Well, the mayor is still 
the mayor appoints uh, a magistrate to operate the court for him. I would so add. We do have that. This yeah, don't have that. And then I, would, I would add. What's made the difference is the Supreme Court of Ohio has put certain regulations down to ensure there's a separation of powers. And I would add language to the fact and check with Jeff on this. Um, Governor the mayor's court and in accordance with the uh, rules of superintendency by the Supreme Court of Ohio. And that's because, because the Supreme Court of Ohio does regulate by law uh, mayor's court. And the Supreme Court of Ohio can do that because the modern courts amendment, which we passed about in the 1970s, gave specific powers to the Supreme Court of Ohio. And one of them is all, all the judicial powers in the state is vested in the Supreme Court of Ohio and such other subsidiary courts that are created by the state. But the rules governing the uh, courts are set out by the Supreme Court of Ohio. That's why we want to check with Jeff on this to see if you want to add language. Where do you want to add it? At the very end, last sentence. And in accordance with the uh, rules and regulations uh, promulgated by the Supreme Court of Ohio. Because they're the ones that ordained that you have to have a magistrate. Okay, the judicial powers is over, and that's payback for the big long win. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking I picked the right <laughs> Okay. It's about done, huh? Other duties. Yes. Is it me? Yes. yes. <laughs> Sorry. The mayor shall be recognized as the official and ceremonial head of the municipality and by the governor for military purposes. The mayor shall be an ex officio member of all council committees. The mayor shall have all other powers and duties imposed upon the mayor by ordinance, resolution, and the Ohio Revised Code that do not conflict with other provisions in this charter. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Compensation. The mayor shall establish, the council shall establish the salary of the mayor by ordinance. The salary, salary of the mayor shall not be changed during the term of office. Okay. Um, section 3.06 qualifications. The mayor shall be a resident and elector of the municipality for at least 12 consecutive months prior to the time of filling of filing for office and shall continue to be a qualified elector of the municipality during the elective term of office. The mayor shall hold no other elective public office. The mayor shall not be otherwise employed by nor shall hold any other office in this municipality except as provided by this charter. I think 12 months seems awfully small <laughs> yeah. for the mayor. I, you know, I would think of somebody having been here for a while, and and it really is helpful if they've been on council, but we aren't requiring that. But for you to become mayor and you've been here 13 months, I, I don't know about that. Yeah. Well, you have to get the vote before, too. Well, but, you know, it could be somebody who's who, who's running against John Boehner? No. no. Nobody knows. Nobody knows, do we? Yeah, I, I agree with you. I, I, I just think that that seems pretty weak. I know. Well, did, did you have an alternative? No. Oh. You need to. I'd say 24 months. I'd, say, I, I, I'd like it for a different reason. Uh, how much do you know about our little town in 12 months? Yeah. How many good decisions can you make? Well, that's, yeah, that's just all of that. Well, I mean, that's, I mean, that's almost true, though, for council members, too. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but they're yeah. one six, eight, so you know, there's, yeah. there's a big difference there. Six. But of six, course, it's yeah. better than uh, But than to be mayor. mayor yeah. yeah, I mean, as far as the mayor is a spokesperson, they're a ceremonial head, they marry people, and everything else. Well, with, right. With 60 yeah. months, be a how many? 60. I, I was kind of thinking, because if you think about going through, I mean, a year is basically going through each season one time. 
Yeah, that's not even necessarily having gone through you don't a, cycle have a rhythm of, of the a cycle yeah. of counsel. Yeah, you know, but sixteen months I think would be. Mm-hmm. About five years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Under yeah. To be mayor. Why? Just to give an overlap. No, just the, twelve months. You you don't know anything. If you've been here twelve months, you have very little understanding of, of how things get done and and who's who and. Yeah, you know, it's it's pretty pretty weak. Five years, you're you're more. Uh, you're part of the community more. Mm. Yeah, I mean, we are not community. You know, we're very very rare with our green belt, with our mm-hmm. with the way we were born. Uh, there's a lot of goofy things that happen sure. in, in this town, but we love them, and we don't care if you don't like our goofy things. We're <laughs> just, <laughs> Right. But we want you to respect them. Yes. But they'll move here unless you, <laughs> if you are ready yeah. to. If you make it, <laughs> so, yeah. if you so make it 60 <laughs> months, you might want to consider um, restricting the mayor to no consecutive terms. So if he's in there for five years, or she, as the case may be, you don't want a continual thing. Maybe you want to change. Uh, or at least the option for change, uh, because uh, you know I, I. You mean term limit? Yeah. If you term get limit. a good mayor, why limit yeah. the term? Right. Uh, it's hard enough to get good people. In the last right. election, term limits were there, and it was uh, strongly rejected. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And why? I mean, if you have a good person. Yeah, yeah and I'm not a fan of all the term limits. I yeah. Think one of the reasons that the state of Ohio is screwed up now is because of term limits. Yeah. That just leaves the opportunity for unsavories to. We we lived here for get in. I don't know how many months. Not quite. Not not three years. We lived here probably 24, 27 months. Moved to St. Louis, and lived there eight years and came back. And so, how long have I lived here? Well, now 40 years. But I could say 43 years, you know. But when I came back, Green Hills had changed enough. A lot of not all the same people were here. I moved back to the same street I had lived on. We wow. lived in a little townhouse and came back and bought a house on that same street. So um, I in no way would have come back feeling like I was qualified to even be on council, let alone be mayor, you know. And I had lived here before. I'm thinking the sentiment is longer than 12. Mm-hmm. 60's been thrown out. Mm-hmm. 36 would be a compromise. Well, I can mm-hmm. go 36 or 60. You yeah. said 60. Yes. Well, I'd say at least 36. So that way it gives them three years in the village. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if they've lived here before and returned, yeah. three, three consecutive years. That's right. right. Not, you know, you have to take into consideration people that may have even grown up here. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. And moved back. That's a good compromise. Yeah. Well, let's... I have no problem with that at all. Okay. Let's just make note of that and we'll come back to that as one of our things. Okay. Um, Shall we go 10 minutes or shall we stop?